Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to focus on solving problems involving perpendicular bisector theorem. Before we go over some examples, let's have a review on perpendicular bisector theorem. Looking at this picture right here, line CM is a perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Again, two conditions were met. It is perpendicular. It forms 90 degree angle. And this AB was cut into two pieces. So again, line CM is a perpendicular bisector of segment AB. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that up here. We remember that the perpendicular bisector theorem states that any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from both the endpoints of the line segment on which it is drawn. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that theorem right here. So what does this mean? If we put dot on line segment CM, the distance from that dot all the way to point A and point B would be equal or congruent. So then we can go ahead and say that since C is on the perpendicular bisector here, we can say that AC is actually congruent to that of CB. So I can go ahead and write that uh, down here. So that is AC is congruent to that of CB. Now, what happens if I add more dots in there? So if I put another dot here, so let's put another dot here. Let's call this as a uh, dot uh, K so that we can go ahead and draw a line segment that connects from uh, point K to point A that is actually equidistant to the one from K all the way to B, so that we can go ahead and say that in this case right here, we have um, AK would be congruent to KB. That also works on the other way. So if I put another dot here, let's name this as dot um, H, so that we go ahead and connect A and H together that would be congruent to that of HB. So this would be congruent. So I'll have um, four um, tick marks on this. That means these are congruent. I'll put three tick marks for that, three tick, mark, uh, tick marks for that, so that we can go ahead and add that up here. We have um, AH is congruent to that of HB. So this is what we mean by perpendicular bisector theorem. Now let's go over some examples. Looking at this problem right here, it says that line ML, so this line right here is a perpendicular bisector to segment TK. So this segment right here. And looking at this picture, the two conditions are met this line is perpendicular to that of KT because there's a small square right there telling us that it's 90 degrees. And at the same time, this KT is cut into two pieces, KM and MT. So then line ML or LM is a perpendicular bisector to KT. Now we're supposed to determine MT. So how long is this line segment? Since this KT was bisected, meaning this was cut or divided into two equal pieces. So then we can go ahead and say that our MT is also 13. So they're both equal each other. So I can go ahead and label that up here. MT is 13. Now we're looking for KL or LK. So what is the length for this? Now we remember that the perpendicular bisector theorem states that any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from both the endpoints of the line segment on which it is drawn. So since this point L is on the um, perpendicular bisector of KT, this tells us that the distance from L to T is the same as the distance from 
L to K. So this means this is 16. If we draw any dots along this perpendicular bisector, those dots will always be equidistant to both endpoints of the line segment. So that means this one right here should be 16. Now let's move on to the next example. Look at the figure below and determine RT. So RT is this segment right here. So uh, we have to examine first if both conditions are met. Does it form 90 degree angle? Does it bisect the line segment? So first, this line PT, because the statement, uh, the problem does not say, uh, does not tell us that this is a perpendicular bisector. So we need to examine it. So this line PT is actually perpendicular. That's a small square right there. So it's 90 degrees. So we're good with the first condition. Now let's see if the segment WR is bisected. So as you can see here, we have two congruent uh, line segments that's PR and WR. So that means our line PT is a perpendicular bisector. So let me write that um, down here. Since PT is a perpendicular bisector based on the perpendicular bisector theorem, any points on the perpendicular bisector would be equidistant from both the endpoints of the line segment on which it is drawn. So that means this point here is equidistant to uh, this TW will have the same distance as TR. Since TW is 25, that means this is 25 as well. This does not always work with T only. Any point along the perpendicular bisector will always be equidistant to these endpoints. So that we can go ahead and say that RT or TR would be 25. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Determine the following. First, we have uh, side TL. HM is this side right here. ML is this side right here. Now, we first examine if it um, satisfies all the condition for perpendicular bisector theorem. First, this line TM, is it perpendicular to HL? Yes, it is. The small square tells us that. Now, is HL bisected? Yes, this label tells us that both HM and ML have equal values. The tick mark tells us that. So then HL was bisected. So that we can go ahead and say that line TM is a perpendicular bisector of HL. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down here. So that we can go ahead and apply the perpendicular bisector theorem. Any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from both the endpoints of the line segment on which it is drawn. So this dot right here is on the perpendicular bisector. Again, it works for all dots that we put on this bisector right here, perpendicular bisector. So that means if our HT is 10, this side right here would also be 10, because again, that is based on the perpendicular bisector theorem. So our TL is 10, so I can write that up here. Now we're supposed to solve for HM. HM is this one. Now notice that there are two triangles that are formed in here, and they are both right triangle. So we don't get overwhelmed by all the triangles that are in the picture so that we can solve for HM. We can go ahead and cover the triangle on the right. So if I were to cover that, we can go ahead and just focus on this triangle. So I can go ahead and rewrite that um, triangle up here. So we are supposed to solve for this question mark, which represents the HM. Now notice that this is a right angle because again, the other side was right angle. That means the other side is also right angle so that the sum for both of them would be 180 degrees. So that we can go ahead and say that we can solve for this question mark right here, which is actually HM by using the Pythagorean theorem so that we can go ahead and rewrite uh, write the equation for this, that this is our hypotenuse and these are the two legs. So the formula for the Pythagorean theorem is that we are supposed to 
um, square both the legs. So that would be h m squared plus 6 squared equals 10 squared, which is the hypotenuse. So that we can go ahead and um, simplify this. So that is h m is, um, oh, that's plus 36 equals 10 squared is 100. So then to solve for h m, we are going to subtract 36 from both sides, minus 36 and minus 36, so that we can cross that, that is squared, 36 and 36 out. So we have hm squared is equal to 64, because 100 minus 36 is 64. So to solve for hm, we square root both sides. We can cross the squared and square root. Our hm, therefore, is 8. So the measure of HM or this question mark right here is 8. So we can label that um, up here. So this HM is 8. Now we're supposed to solve for ML. Now looking at this, since we say that this was bisected, that means that our ML would also be 8. Did you get the same answers as this? Good. Perfect. Now let's move on to the next example. In the figure, line MB, so this line right here, is a perpendicular bisector to line segment AC. Since it is a perpendicular bisector, that's the condition that is given up there, we can go ahead and say that our segment AM is equal to MC, and at the same time, our AB is congruent to BC. Again, that is based on perpendicular bisector Theorem, so that we can go ahead and solve for x by putting these two equal to each other. Now, please be careful. This 5x plus 3 cannot be equal to both of them because that is coming from a different line segment. It has to be these two that should be equal to each other so that we can go ahead and say that our bc, so I'm just going to go ahead and write that um, down here. So we have um, bc is equal to, so this line segment is equal to BA. So then we plug uh, the values in. So our BC is 7X plus 1. So I'm just going to write that um, down here. So 7X plus 1 equals our BA is 13X minus 11. So then I'm just going to show the work on how to solve for X down here. After doing the math, we can see that our x value is 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that up here. Now we're supposed to solve for a, b. So what is the measure for this um, segment right here? We can do that by plugging in the value of x into this expression for a, b. So I'm just going to show the work on the side here. So that is a, b is equal to, that's um, 13 x minus 11 so that we plug the value of x which is 2 to the um, um, x right here so that's 13 minus 11 again the x is 2 so 13 times 2 is 26 minus 11 is um, 15 so our a b is 15 so i'm just going to go ahead and label that um, up here so a b is 15 so i will show the work on how to solve for b c as you can see both b c and a b have the same value which is 15. now we're supposed to solve for a m and m c since we already have the x in order that we can solve for um, a, M, and M, C, all we need to do is just to plug it in so that we can go ahead and solve for um, M, C. The, again, the formula for or the expression that represents M, C is 5X plus 3. So I'm going to show the work on the side here. So the value for M, C after we did the math is 13. So that means that our A, M is equal to mc so we can write it down here am is equal to mc and mc is equal to 13 so then am is also 13 so i will put that um, up here so that is equal to 13 as well that's it if you find this video helpful hit like and subscribe for more math videos see ya